the Chavitzchayim, he chose the, the, to name this work of his Avas Chesed. Avas Chesed. Although it translates loving kindness, but it means love, love kindness. Avas Chesed, love kindness. Not loving kindness, but love kindness. What is it based upon? There's a verse in Micho. Micho is one of the prophets. And Micho, the prophet says, in English it's called Micah. Higid l'cho odom atov. God informed man what's good. Ma'ashem dorsh bimcho. What does God want from every human being? He informed man what is good. Now, who's man? We always said many times, originally God created the human being. He named him Odom. Odom, Adam. What is the root of the word Adam? Adam was called Adam because he's made of earth. Because in Hebrew, the word Adama means earth. Because he ate of the tree of knowledge, he became disenfranchised. He's no longer classified as Odom. Who assumed that cl new class that classification of Odom? The Jewish people at Sinai. Why? Because we were able to achieve spiritual advances due to our DNA, which we have from the patriarchs and we were able to develop to a level that we're able to meet and address the objective of creation which is lechodi barosif god created this world for his glory we are the only nation who have the spiritual capacity to live within the context of the torah itself therefore we're called odom the word odom comes from adama meaning man what is the value of man potential Potential. If you leave soil, it could be the most virgin soil, most fertile soil. If you don't cultivate it, it's just a clump of earth. But if you cultivate it and you understand its value, all life grows from earth. Unlimited amounts of life grow from earth. That's the human being. The Jew is Odom. If he remains dormant, he's just the equivalent of a clump of earth. But if he makes his decisions and takes initiatives, all eternity are the outgrowths of those initiatives that he takes. That's Atem Kri Modom. The Navi says, Higid Lecho Odom Matov. God informed Odom what is good. What does God demand of you? What does he want from the Jew? Evidently, God wants from the Jew. It's not what he wants from the Gentile. Gentiles only bound to the seven, no seven Nohite laws. What he wants from us is a lot more than he wants from the non-Jew. Now, I'll give you an example. A person has, you have a bank. They have a la lending capacity. They can lend billions of dollars. And the borrower has projects which need that kind of funding. And you have another bank, maximum they can live, lend a thousand dollars. To which bank do you go to? To the bank that has unlimited money and can accommodate your project, and you can prove the validity of the need for that kind of money. You have to go to that larger bank. The bank has the means to provide the funding you need, which will facilitate that the success of that project. The non-Jew who has such a limited capacity, he cannot address the objective of creation. So what is he given? Seven no hard laws, a paltry level of obligation. Just don't cross these lines and you're okay. The Jew has mega, mega responsibility. We're given the whole world to address its value, its objective, and its eternity. The Jew has that capacity. So who does God go to? God says, I will take you as my people. It will be incumbent upon you to address the objective of creation. He informed Odom. Odom is the Jew. 
Atem Kriyam Adam. You are, have the classification of Adam. Who was the classification of Adam before he ate of the tree of knowledge? Well, then he had an unlimited capacity. He informs what is good. What is good? Torah is good. Lekach Tov Nasatulachem. King Solomon says, I've given you a Lekach Tov, a commodity which is one of a kind. What does God demand of you? What does he want from you? You should do justice. You should live with integrity. And love, love chesed. Not do chesed, love chesed. It's not enough to do chesed. If the world needs chesed, needs living indiscriminate kindness, you say, well, when it comes my way, I will respond. But if the world needs kindness, what happens if it doesn't come your way? So all the areas that need that level of kindness, who's going to address it? But if you love kindness, you're going to seek it out. Even though it's not within your proximity, you will make every inquiry, where can I involve myself to do that chesed? That's only if you have avas chesed, if you love chesed. Give you an example. Lahabdil. It was known. Clinton, Bill Clinton, he used to love ice cream. And he used to go specially to Philadelphia. And he had a freezer full of, I don't know what, banana, banana, banana flavor ice cream. And who knows what kind of, he loved ice cream. So he brought in from wherever it is, he brought in that ice cream to the White House. And in the impregnable lower parts of the, of the White House, where even if a tongue bomb falls, it won't touch it, his ice cream was preserved down there. You got it? Because he loved ice cream, Lahavdil. So that ice cream company doesn't have to worry they're not going to have somebody to buy ice cream. Because you have Bill Clinton, the who loves ice cream. God says this world needs chesed. So if you only do chesed when it comes your way, who will address the needs of the world which are chesed? It's only the person who loves chesed. You love it, you're going to seek it out. Wherever there's going to be a need, you're going to be there. To address it and to attend to it. So two things you need. You need justice. And you have need Avas Chesed. You know, it's very interesting. The Talmud tells us that God's signet is truth. The signet of God is truth. And therefore, the Mesil Sasharm writes, Path of Just, Rabbi Chal writes, that the certain groups of people will not merit to be in the presence of the of the Shechina, of God's countenance. Who are they? Kat Shakronim. People are classified as liars. Liars will never have a relation with God. Why? That since the signet of God is truth, these people have no relevance to truth. Proof of the pudding is they're liars. They live a life of lie. Even when they tell the truth, it's not all truth. Because they're so adept in lying. They can't say a true word. It's always intermingled with some levels of untruth. What's mishpat? Mishpat is justice. But justice, which meets the standard of truth, that's justice. Doesn't meet the standard of truth, that's not justice. You, know, you have a kangaroo court. They may call it justice, but that's not justice. Snow more said justice. Snow more more. But that's not the justice God spoke about. Because it had no relevance to truth. So what, what does God want? What does God want from the, from the, from the Odom? Asos Mishpat. You should adjudicate verdicts which are justice. Babas Chesed. Now it's interesting. Chesed has no realms to truth. Chesed is indiscriminate kindness. Even a person doesn't deserve the kindness, you're willing to help that person. That's kindness. When I deal with justice, if it meets the standard of truth, it's justice. If not, it's not justice. So these two 
components, a uh, key components of existence, asos mishpat, bavas chesed, and loving kindness. Love the kindness. Now the Chavetz Chaim has a question. God says, what does God want for man? To do justice? Ba'avas chesed. It would be enough to say, to do justice and chesed. As he tells you to do justice, do chesed. But it doesn't, that's not what the, the prophet says. Asos chesed, ba'avas chesed. Asos mishpat, ba'avas chesed. Do justice and love kindness. So that's Chavetz Chaim's question. What does it say regarding chesed, love kindness? And regarding justice, it says do justice. Or you should say, Ehov mishpat, the chesed, you should love justice and love kindness. But evidently, he's, he's addressing each one differently. And what does it mean? Higid l'odom. Higid l'chodom. He informed you. Now, we, what's discussed? What is lomar means to say in Hebrew? Lasaper means to tell over. Lagid means to inform you. The connotation of the word higid is I'm telling you something that you wouldn't know unless I share it with you. You have a, a sipur story. I've heard the story before. That's because sip, the word sipor means in Hebrew, lispor means to count. A story is made up of, of multiple pieces of information. So sipor is, a, is an accumulation of information. But that information can be worthless, has no value. I'm going to inform you of something. What kind of informing? I'm going to tell you something that you, it's important to know. God is informing us something. If he wouldn't tell us, we wouldn't know it. What are they? The two most important things in your lifetime. Asus mishvot ve'ov chesed. Ba'avas chesed. Okay? The Navi... This is one of the later prophets. He's coming to tell me something, something I wouldn't know. Uncle God told me. Asos Mishvat Avas Chesed. You know something? If you learn the Chumash, it's obvious. We have a portion called Mishpatim. Ela Mishpatim Ashetosim with name. These these are the laws of the judicial system, the qualification of the judges, how they have to interrogate the witnesses who swallow. I need the, the prophet living 1,500 years after the Torah at Sinai to tell me exactly what God wants. Read the Torah. You know what he wants? Chesed. The Torah tells us what, what he wants. He does chesed. You should do chesed. So what exactly is Micha teaching me, which is not contained already in the Torah? The Nafi elucidates something. What, what's the elucidation here? It's explicit in the Torah. That's the Chavetz Chaim's question. He quotes a Gemara in Sanhedrin. Person goes to court as a defendant. Somebody claims he owes him money. And the judge rules that the person has to pay. And he doesn't have the means. You know what they do? They strip off his coat. And he has to give his coat as payment. To pay the other person who had, of course, the, the, the ruling was, the verdict was, you owe. When you leave the court, you should leave with a lilt, singing a song. You should dance out of court. Thank God. I'm not, I paid my debt. There's no claim against me. I paid. There was a claim. I paid my claim. I'm free. 
when that two person is just dishonest, not dishonest, everybody believes he's right. So the court had to adjudicate it. They said this man is guilty. And he has his fancy Grioni tie, his, his whatever his Versace suit, his Gucci shoes, and they strip him down to his underwear. And he walks out of court with his boxers. And he's dancing. They say, are you out of your mind? What happened? He says, you don't know. They took it all away. I paid my debt. Now nobody has a claim against me anymore. It's terrific. A person, God forbid, has a tumor, a cancerous tumor. And they, they're prepping him for the surgery. And he's in a hospital gown. He's all hooked up with anesthesia, with, with all kinds of tubes. And the guy is singing into the, into the operating room. And the surgeons operate on him. It takes six years to get an appointment just with this guy. They say, are you out of your mind? He says, how long have you been surgery? 15 hours. What are you singing? You don't get it. He goes, I have this surgeon. And to go with this procedure, I'm going to live another 60 years. This is to celebrate. It may be painful for a while, but ultimately, what am I going to have? I'm going to have life. So the Gemara says, the person who's found guilty, and he has to pay the debt, and even though they have to strip his coat off of him, he walks out of court singing a song. You know, there's a mitzvah at the Seder to eat matzah. And the matzah has to meet certain standards to be considered the object that you can fill the positive family eating matzah at the Seder. This year, matzah, well, Goshmor matzah, cost $39, $40 a pound, made $42 a pound. Pound, right? It's the closest thing to, uh, what's it called? To beluga caviar. Right. Okay. Unless Putin sends it to you as a gift for, you know, for Rosh Hashanah. $42 a pound of matzah. You see, you know, that's, that, that's, that's a big nut to crack. That's a hefty price. You know, person sells you, sells you the Hope Diamond for 42 bucks. That little stone, it's a rock. That's a big price to pay for that rock. But if you know the innate value of that stone, you understand the return, what you're getting for this is beyond, beyond whatever that stone is. If you understand the innate value of, a, of the mitzvah of eating matzah, the Seder, the value of that, 42 bucks, it's a pittance. And if you don't have the money, you're supposed to go borrow money to go buy the matzah. Why? Because it's essential. It's essential to your soul. It is addressing your objective in, in, in existence. You can't, you can't. But if you're able to come on, to, you have the means to buy it, you buy it. Well, that's pretty expensive. Okay. But the Canyon Grant, to go to Canyon Ranch and eat grass for two weeks, that's not too expensive. Because there, the grass you eat, it's, it's literally, they use no insecticides. You got it? That's, that's the kind of grass they feed you. It's the healthy stuff. Yeah. People have it all mixed up. So Asos Mitchell, what does God want from you? So what is he informing us? Of course, justice, you have to do justice. But what is the value of justice? It's like we said, the 36 hidden tzaddikim in the world. So somebody asked Rebel Yoshev, Zech Tzadik Lebrocha, how could Rav Shach, Zech Tzadik who was the Rashiv of Panovich, how could he not be one of the 36 hidden tzaddikim? We all know he's a tzaddik. And he's one of a kind. So Rav Yoshev says, you know he's a tzaddik. But to really know who he is, you don't know who he is. That's hidden. You read the Torah, justice, charity, but what is it? The Navi says, he's telling something that you wouldn't know unless he tells you about it. You have to appreciate it. Otherwise, it's passe. Charity, dollar in the box, a dollar in that box, this box. It's all the same. No. 
It's putting the dollar in the box, pulling the, the handle on that slot machine, and a half a billion dollars falls out of that machine. And even that's less than what it is. Asos Mishvot. The value of rendering an honest judgment or to be involved only in legal transactions. You don't want to be involved in anything that's not legal. But you're ahead of the game. I made profit. That's not profit. That ultimately is, is contraband. Worse, it's illegal. It contaminates you. You know, today they have a thing, many years already, person goes to the bank, a holdup, and the teller gives them a packet of money. About five, five minutes out of the bank, it explodes, and the person's covered with dye that it takes about three weeks to get the dye off his skin. So the, th the thief who held up the bank, he could always be identified as the bank robber because it just explodes in his hands. All this money, cash that, that he took from the teller, you understand? Asus Mishvot. But it's so costly. What are all the profit I can make if I deal illegally? You know how you, it's going to create a contamination that you're going to reek from here to the end of the world and you're not going to be able to conceal that, 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 that foul stench that's going to be accompany you. That's the reality. There were a band of people in a community, and it was a cell to launch a rebellion against the king. And they themselves, to identify themselves among themselves, they agreed they're going to wear a certain type of tunic, a black tunic with a purple set, a purple stripe on it. So this, as a result of that, when they see what they know, they all belong to the same clan. Part of the cell that's going to launch this rebellion. Okay? One night, they go to the tavern. And one person says he's picking up the tab for everybody. And after they finish eating the meal and drinking, the tavern owner says, okay, everybody has to pay. So, what happens? They all run out and they leave this one guy to do the dishes because he's, he has no money to pay. So the tavern owner says, I want to tell you something. You're going to be here all night washing dishes. Not only that, I'm going to strip that tunic. I'm going to take the your tunic you wear as collateral that when, when you come back with the money, I'll give it back to you. In the meantime, word got out to the king that there's a cell attempting to launch this rebellion. And the word was to identify this group, they all wear this tunic with this purple stripe on it. Okay? And this person is cursing the day that he went into that tavern because he didn't have money to pay. They took the shirt off his back. But later, because they did, when the king launches an investigation, arrested all these people, and all these people going to the gallows, this one person is not going to the gallows. Because his tunic was stripped off his back. So if you have a tunic that you're not supposed to have, and that's the basis for your condemnation, when they strip it off you for the sake of justice, to pay your debt, you sing a song. And you dance a jig which is the best, luckiest moment of your life, because if you would have been caught with that tunic, you'd go to the gallows with the rest of them. That's the Chavitz Chaim's allegory to, to magnify this point.
Okay, there's no other comments. We're going to stop here. See you in a half hour.